Hallelujah. Psalm 139. That gum good, girls? Oh, it's okay. You keep chewing. I, it's, I, I call that Pentecostal chewing tobacco. Amen. Mother and daughter over there just smacking away. So where, where'd you learn that? I, I had, a, I had a, pre, a, a college professor, and he was big about people chewing. Boy, you chewing gum, boy, he could just chew you out, man. So I, I guess I picked up on that, but... I look at the band every now and then, and I, t- I wish you wouldn't be chewing that gum. For some, they have to do that to keep rhythm. By the way, those watching us, we're praying for you. We thank God that you're watching, that you tuned in this morning. Many, uh, uh, you know, I have quite a few friends that have, again, and it's been this way the whole year, uh, tested positive but have very little symptoms, and thank God for that. Uh, and some are just getting through it. I had a friend text me last night and said, Pastor, you know, he, he comes to church every now and then. And he said, Pastor, I got pneumonia and COVID. I said, no, you can't have both. You got to pick one. Amen. You know, and of course, you got to go with the, the one that makes the medical world more money. Amen. So they go with that. Uh, one of the things that I've learned through life, and as we move through 2021, today is very important because it sets an agenda throughout the year. Now, next Sunday, uh, we will start fasting as a church. So I'm going to give you a, a reprieve for a week. Amen. To set your agenda, how you want to fast, what you want to fast. If you say, Pastor, I've never fasted before. When I got born again, I didn't know several things. I didn't know what tithing was. I didn't understand that to to give of my finances in order for God to bless the rest of my life. I didn't understand what fasting was. The scripture says when you pray, when you fast, when you give. And fasting is a way that's going to bring health into your body. If there's one thing the body of Christ needs is health. Amen. It's one thing your body needs is health. And one of the ways to do that, and I started last year, you know, I fast every January. And uh, if we, if we start next Sunday, it gives us 21 days, amen, of a really good fast. And so as we, we press through the uh, 21 days, you can imagine 21 days, you can break a habit. You can start a habit. You can turn things around in your life. So I'm looking forward to it. Last year, at this time, I was 245 pounds. It's amazing, isn't it? And, and I'm about, I don't know, I'm, I'm less than that now. All right? But one thing I did start doing last year, is that gum really that good, Cheryl? Amen. Uh, and so, uh, <laughs> I know you did. I know you did. I think you stuck them. You reached over and got their gum and threw it in your mouth just so you could just prove the power of God right there. Uh, so... <laughs> Y'all messed me up. I'm trying to start right, and y'all killing me. Y'all killing me. Y'all knew it. Just pushing my buttons. That's what you're doing. And I'll, I'll be looking out here one day, and every one about y'all, you go, where was I? Talking about fasting. Amen. And it, it, it shifts your life. I started walking last year when I didn't think I could. And I would walk just down to the staff house and back. And, and so this whole year, for 360-something days, pretty much every day I have walked our property and, uh, you know, and, and my motivation is my sister who's in heaven. It's not you. It's, it's my sister. Because I remind myself she died in a wheelchair. And she was unable to walk. And if I can, if I can walk, I'm going to walk. If I can exercise a couple times a week, I'm going to exercise. I'm, I, I got to find a motivation to press me on. And she is my, I, I will hurt, I will pop, I will sweat. I will just feel like crying when I'm working out. And I think of my sister who was unable to do that because of muscular dystrophy. And I say, Jerry, you just keep right on pressing. Amen. You got to find your motivation this year. Can I get an amen? What's driving you? What is it that presses you through? Uh, you, know, oh, you know, many things I look at as, a, as a, the body of Christ. You know, every member of our church is driven by something. And you have to discover what those things are. You know, the scripture, uh, the dictionary actually defines the verb drive as to guide, to control, or to direct. In this house, there are some that are driven by a problem. Some are driven by a pressure, a deadline. And others are driven by painful memories, a haunting fear. Many today by an unseen virus. They're, they're driven by it. It's, it's changed their uh, uh, way of living, the way of doing things. Uh, there's several things that drive us. Some people are driven by guilt. They spend their entire lives running from regrets or hiding their shame. The guilt-driven people are manipulated by memories. Memories come back up, and it'll begin to hold you. They allow their past to control their future, believing their past mistakes to be bigger than God. They often unconsciously punish themselves by sabotaging their own success. They'll start becoming successful, and they'll remember, oh, they, no, no, I, I, I'm a guilty person. I'm so 
somebody who has, who has done this wrong and that wrong, and they'll sabotage any good things that have happened in their life. And by doing that, you know, when Cain sinned by killing his brother Abel, the Scripture tells us in Genesis 4.12, you will be a restless wanderer in the earth. He became disconnected from God because of his guilt. Amen. Some people are driven by resentment. They hold on to their hurts and they never get over them. It's like somehow if I can hold on to this, it, it'll mean that, that I got you. That, that, but the issue is forgiveness. Everybody say forgiveness powerful man if you can learn to forgive this year and let go of resentments in, in your life instead of releasing their pain through forgiveness they rehearse it over and over in their minds some resentment driven people they clam up and they internalize their anger you know it's like they hold on to it it, it makes them feel a little bit better but others blow up and I have been around some blow-ups. And normally, watch this, the blow-up is never really intended toward the person that caused the pain. Amen. They just blow up on somebody else. They push off on somebody else and they explode. Both responses are unhealthy and unhelpful. Resentment always hurts you more than it does the person you resent. While your offender has probably forgotten the offense and has gone on with life, you continue to stew in your pain perpetrating your past and watch this they drive it they drive resentment they live in resentment you can't let resentment drive you this year amen you got to let it go if you want a free year you got to learn how to forgive you can't allow that you can't be driven by guilt or resentment amen some people are driven by fear Woo! did i see that last year fear drove people these and it drove our politics it it drove but fear is a devil. Amen. It is the opposite of faith. It is unseen. And it paralyzes where faith sets you free. And yet fear paralyzes you and holds you down. And people are, bit, are being driven by churches are closed because of fear. Amen. Business is closed because of fear. Amen. These fears may be the result of a traumatic experience, unrealistic expectation, grow up in a high-control home. Uh, it could be because of the virus. But regardless of the cause, fear-driven people often miss great opportunities because they're afraid to venture out. I looked at last year, and I watched things start getting closed down. And, Tom, you know what I started doing? I started living, man. Amen. I remember last year I went to... Uh, 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 where was that place? Montana to a conference. And then I, I was up with my, my grandkids in, in Colorado. I was snowmobiling. People were wearing masks. And I thought, why are you wearing a mask? They said, well, it's a pandemic. And the next thing I know, I'm driving a car home planning seven weeks of outdoor services. Amen. Just so we could keep having church. Can I get an amen? In other words, last year didn't shut us down. If you remember, we had a beast feast last year. We had a group of men that showed up and had a great time. Some of those men, I did their funeral last year. It was the last big event they got to be at. And it wasn't because of a virus. It was just life. Amen. Life happens to them. And so I looked at last year and I saw the conferences, the Muscle Car Sunday, and all the things that went down. I thought, you know what we did? We lived in spite of the fear. We did not allow fear to drive us. Amen. We kept pressing on. We kept moving. Come on, give me an amen in this house. Amen. I, I'm not here to play life safe. Amen. Or, or avoid risk. I, I don't want to manage the status quo. That's nothing I want to do. And I don't want to see people get hurt. But my place as your pastor is try to help folk live beyond uh, fear, uh, resentment, uh, guilt, all these things, and move into a life of freedom. Can I get an amen? Oh, materialism. Boy, did we lose a lot of materialism last year. Amen. But some people are driven by it. Their desire to acquire becomes the whole goal of their lives. This drive to always want more is based on the misconception that having more will make you more happy. More happy. Even some folks just want to be more happy, more important, more secure. But all three ideas are untrue. Possessions only provide temporary ha happiness. Amen. It's only just for a little while because things do not change. We eventually become bored with them, and then we want newer, bigger, better version. I have had to this year decide to myself, okay, now I want that, but I'm not going to do that. Amen. I'm going to bless somebody else with my finances. I'm going to do something else a little bit different because I find in life, as a matter of fact, I gave away more last year than I got in. Now, that, you know what that did? That set me up for a really good year. Amen. Because I gave away more than I brought in. And as long as I can release things, amen, God will bless me with other things. Some people are driven by the need for approval. Oh, and this is a, this is a preacher's trap. 
you got to be careful as a because you know here's the thing you're cursed if you do and cursed if you don't i found that out this this last year you know if you open up your church you're cursed if you shut it down you're cursed if you do this you people there are people that they're looking and and their approval to you means more than anything else now i believe i like for folk to like me i'm just one of those guys Amen. You know, and, and I run with guys who like to be liked. We, we love to be liked. But if you allow the expectations of parents or spouses or children or teachers or friends to control your life, and many adults are still trying to earn the approval of, of unpleasable parents. Some parents cannot be pleased. It doesn't matter what you do, that, that parent's not going to be pleased. Others are driven by peer pressure, always worried about what others might think of them. Unfortunately, those who follow the crowd, they usually get lost in it. I don't know all the keys to success, but one key to failure is to try to please everyone. Amen. I find if I please God, if I just do my best to please God. Even Jesus said nobody can serve two masters. So pick a master and serve that master. My master is Jesus. Amen. There are other forces that can drive people's lives. But all lead to the same daddy end. And as we move into 2021, you've got to realize that, look, what is it? My Have I got unused potential, unnecessary stress, and an unfulfilled life? If so, i got to be driven by purpose. Everybody say purpose. This year, I look more as purpose. i got to be driven by that more than anything else. And as a pastor, one of the greatest gifts I can offer is showing people how to live lives guided, controlled, and directed by God. Nothing matters more than knowing God's purpose for your life. My place in your life is to prepare you for the kingdom of God. Amen. Here's one thing I know. You live and you die. Amen. That we got babies in this house. We got brand new babies. Hallelujah. Amen. In other words, the cycle of life is still going on. Amen. They folk leaving and going to the kingdom. There's other folk coming into the kingdom. So my place is to prepare you to live well whoo, and to die well. Amen. My place is to try to teach you to live a life full of risk. Amen. To press in. To understand that Holy Wild is not just a mantra. It is a lifestyle. It's the way we live. Amen. I was with a guy yesterday at at and My phone, by the way, if you've been trying to contact me, my phone dropping calls, dropping texts. People think I hate them, don't like them no more. It's my phone. Don't get paranoid. Amen. Reach me some other venue. Come over and say hi. I don't know. But just know this. My phone just all messed up. So I showed up at at and yesterday. And I'm sitting there talking to the guy. Do you know how easy it is to share the purpose of the little country church with other people? It is so easy. Amen. I'm looking at this at and guy. And, and he's, I, I'm where, I have to pull up my gator, which is my little country church gator. You know? He looked at me and said, no way. I said, look, I'm a pastor at two churches. And, and people trying to get hold of me. And this phone came. Brand new phone I got. But it's dropping calls, this, that, and the other. I, I mean, I, I, I hate this thing. So I throw it over to him. And he's trying to put a new SIM card in and stuff. And I punch in my phone to the muscle car Sunday when I'm driving my hot rod. First, he says, you like hot rods. So I show him my car. Oh, that's a fine car. Man, that thing's beautiful. I said, oh, yeah, it's a Dodge. <laughs> then I go into my bootlegging past, and then I tell him about my friend where I got that car and how I paid a whole dollar for it. And that friend is cremated and lives in the back of the car. If you didn't know this story, it's an amazing story. Hey, man, he's in the car. I got a box that says riding with Rodney. Hey, man, Rodney's in the car. Rodney been flooded twice. He been he been in a fire once. Amen. But he's still there. Hallelujah. So so I, I and he's looking at me like, are you kidding me? You got a dead man in you? I said, no, he's not dead. He gone. He with Jesus right now. But his but his ashes are right here in the back of the car. Amen. Don't get morbid on me. I mean, he ain't living in my car. And then I, I show him a video of me out running the Montgomery County Police in my car. And then he goes, where is this church at? He said, i got to find this church. This is the greatest bunch I've ever seen. It is so easy. Why don't you use all these tools that you've got to share the gospel with people? Amen. This year. Amen. Live with a purpose and an intent inside of your life. This is our, our place in here. So without a purpose, life is emotion without meaning, activity without direction, events without reason. Every event we do has to have a reason for it. It has to have a purpose. So in the Scripture, many different people express a hopelessness in life. And I mean, people at times they get out they, they, they listen to this Isaiah complained in chapter 49 for I have labored to no purpose I have spent my strength in vain and for nothing I read these prophets and I think to myself that we have been where they are now 
But some of them were living in a, a much dire place. Job, Job said this, in Job 7, 6, My life drags by day after hopeless day. He also said, I give up. I'm tired of living. Leave me alone. My life makes no sense. Now hold it right there. I've heard people make this statement, but you didn't lose 10 children. You didn't get ate up with sores from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet and sat in an ash pile scraping your sores, wondering where is God now. You didn't have friends pointing fingers at you and saying, if you had more faith in God... See, one of the problems right now is because people aren't going to the house. They're listening to TV preachers. And they listen to prophets. And they listen to this and that. And they're getting all mixed up, messed up, and ideas about this. I've had pastors tell me, you know, so-and-so left the church because he heard that if he goes over here and he quotes Scripture enough over and over again, he'll get healed, but he won't stay in the house here. And I thought, oh, my God, that man's been with you 30 years, Pastor. He said, yeah, but he just got this crazy idea last year to leave. Stay in the house. Stay in the house and say, listen, I will do my best to keep you balanced. I'll do my best to keep you from getting messed up in a crazy world. That's my place in your life. But many people, they start shifting. They get mad at somebody else. They walk away. This happens. That happens. Stay in. Listen, when I read what Job said, I've been there. But I haven't lost 10 kids. I haven't lost all my economy. I haven't lost all my health. And yet I got there and I said, God, forgive me for acting like this. This man deserved to say this. Amen. You don't deserve that. You ain't had it bad yet. Oh, Pastor, you don't know. You comparing yourself to other people on social media? You, you're taking pictures? You, you're broadcasting your sickness? I told Pastor this morning, I said, I ain't seen one person put on Facebook, I got hemorrhoids, pray for me. <laughs> or take a picture of it and throw it up there for you. Oh, I'm telling you. I mean, it just gets old. We, we poor pitiful me. Oh, look at me. I give up. I'm tired of living. Leave me alone. My life makes no sense. Somebody understand this. Job came out of this. He came out of it. Amen. And then he came up with a great statement. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Whatever I go through in life, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to praise the Lord in this year. Can I get an Amen. Again, the greatest tragedy, my friend, is not death, but life without purpose. You live this life. You, you I made it through 2020. You know, none of us preachers saw it coming. Oh, we preach in 2020. Like, we got vision. We, just, we see what's coming. None of us saw that coming. Not any of the prophets saw that coming. Amen. We were looking for this great year. Instead, we got 2020. Amen. I promise you, President Trump didn't see it coming. Amen. Nobody saw this thing coming. And here it is, 2021. People say, well, it's going to get better. <laughs> I'm going to make my life better. Amen. I'm going to choose to have a good day today. And when I get up in the morning, I'm going to have, choose to have another good day. Amen. I'm just going to keep pressing on it as much as in my ability and faith. I'm going to have the best days I can. Amen. It's going to be up to us. Can I get an amen? Boy, this good preaching this morning. Amen. So many in our generation are going through life without a vision. They have no idea, no plan for their life. For the most part, people just stumble half-heartedly through life, hoping tomorrow, hoping this year will be better than last year, with no plan, no dream, mostly just existing, hoping. They get up, they turn the page of their life one day at a time. Amen. They work from, from, from whatever time till 5 o'clock, and, and then and they start it all over again. But at death. Death is a topic most folk don't want to talk about. And yet I have stood over many of your loved ones and asked God to bless you and give you peace, knowing that they are entered into the kingdom of God. Amen. I miss them. I miss seeing the three generations. I miss, I miss people. Uh, I miss people that, that are no longer with us, whether it be in eternity or gone to somewhere else. Amen. That's life. Amen. You, just, you have to learn. You, you get to a certain place in life, you realize this is life. Amen. And one day it's going to happen to me. Hey, but it's a topic folk don't want to talk about. But as a pastor, I spend a lot of time helping people deal with life, threatening illnesses and sudden accidents and funerals. And, and, and sometimes I miss it and, I, and my heart's broke because I didn't get to me, be with people the way I wanted to. I, this season is so bad. You know, I, I talked with Richard Golightly, and he's one of our lead guitar players now, moved to Arkansas. Richard's dad is in a, in a convalescent home south there. He, he hadn't got to see his dad in almost a year. He can't get in to see him. 
And I hate this season. I hate what's going on. But yet I can tell you this. That if you live a life with a purpose. Amen. And you hang on. And you keep pressing in. 2021 might be the best year you've ever had. Amen. Everyone ends up somewhere. But few people end up somewhere on purpose. I got to decide. I got to end up here on purpose. I got I to make this decision. We are fearfully, the scripture says, and wonderfully made. The good news is that anyone can discover a meaningful life direction. And I've said this over and over. When you have direction, you've just eliminated loneliness out of your life. Some people say, well, I'm lonely. That's because you ain't got direction. Amen. Well, no, I need people in my life. No. All you got is more lonely people in your life. Y'all all lonely together. Well, we're just going to go play the slots in. We all, uh, never mind. You got to have purpose. We are made in the image of a forward-looking God. Look at Psalm 139, verse 13. Are you comfortable? Come on up, Joseph. I got you. I got you. You created for you created my inmost beings. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I am such a pro-life man. Oh, I'm such a pro-life man. There should not even be, there should not even be the statement pro-life or pro-death. That should, they, they shouldn't even be in our vocabulary. We shouldn't even have to have it. Amen. We should all just say life, life starts at conception God intended it that way hallelujah you created my inmost being you knit me together in my mother's womb this David talking I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made let me give you revelation and understanding here David was an illegitimate boy his brothers were his half brothers his mother was not the mother of the other seven boys He's illegitimate. And there are times you find out in life that your parents are not your bio parents. That you've been adopted or something happened and nobody won't talk about it. you got to get a revelation that God intended for you to be here. That God put you here on time and in purpose. He gave you life to do something special on this planet. So David said, I, I, I got a revelation. I got an understanding. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame, my bones was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth. You see, you don't say, I, I'm mad at you, God, because of what my daddy did. I'm mad at you, God, because of my mother. He didn't say that. He said, God, I look beyond mom and dad and realize you did this. You put me here. You brought me here for a purpose and a reason. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. In other words, God decided. God decided that while you were in the womb, he going to write out your life story. And you might have really messed up in chapter 3. You might have really screwed up at chapter 13. Some of y'all catch that in a minute. But God will give you a rewrite. And he keeps writing your story out. He had a plan for you, and you might have skipped some things, but he got it down. When you live on purpose, you keep the end in sight. God invites us to seek him in order to learn what his plan is for our life. This year, when we gather for prayer, when we gather for special meetings, no matter what we're doing, we're intent on seeking the purpose of God in our life. And even though life will continue to happen and bills are going to pile up and problems are going to press in and your children are never going to leave home, you've got to be careful that you don't fall away by listening to the wrong voices. You've got to hear His voice. We were made for this. God made you for where you're at right now. I was made for what I'm doing. Amen. Made for it. Without a vision, you can't drive. A couple weeks ago, I headed out in my purple car to come over here. And as fine as that car is, there's one problem. It doesn't have a windshield. Excuse me, it doesn't have windshield wipers. And it was raining that morning. And I realized without them wipers, I had no vision. 
Without a vision, you ain't got no direction. I turned that car around and went back and got another Dodge that had windshield wipers. No dream, no revelation, no vision. And with no sense of our created purpose, we perish. Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. It literally means where there's no revelation, where there's no understanding. You were meant to be here. Say it with me. I was meant to be here. Amen. He put you here for purpose. Amen. This year to live it out. Where there's no vision, you have, you have, you've got problems. My friend, there's no lifelong growing and personal relationship with your Creator. You don't get to know Him. If I want to know why I'm here, I need to find the one who made me. Now, if I'm an evolutionist, then I, I go back and I, I hang out with amoebas and scum and, and monkeys and whatever else they think you came from. Gas. Go hang out with gas. But if I am a creationalist and I believe that God created me, then I need to hang out with the Creator. And I need to ask the Creator, why did you make me so? Why did you put me here? What purpose am I to do here? Jesus lived with that kind of purpose. Luke 19.10, the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. That's my purpose. I came to destroy the devil and to seek and to save that which don't distract me with anything else. Last week I talked to you about wise men. They were not distracted for 24 months until they found the, the, the Christ child. 24 months that entourage moved through desert storms, dangers, all type of things. 24 months. And they were right on time. John 10, 18. No one takes my life from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. This is the command my daddy told me. Amen. I'm not to give up my life till he says so. John 10, 10. I've come that they may have life and have it to the full. God wants you to have a full life. Well, Pastor, you don't know what's going on in the White House. I don't care what's going on in the White House. I know what's going on in the church house. Amen. Hallelujah. He came to give us a full life. I want a full life. Amen. 2,000 years ago. Over that, Jesus' death, burial and resurrection. The world is still reeling from the shock of grace. That God gave grace to His people and many sons and daughters were born into the kingdom. It's a gift of endless life, absolute forgiveness, salvation, undeserved, unasked for, unpaid for, freely given, simply by living out the Father's vision. I close with Acts 20, 24. Do you know what Paul said right before this? Let me read it to you. Paul has been testifying of the gospel. He says, and now I'm compelled, verse 22, by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. Only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. When the Holy Ghost says to you, listen, in 2021, <clears throat> prison and hardships waiting on you. I'm going to find me another church. I'm going to find me another preacher. I'm going to find me one of them word preachers. Say, I name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. Confess it and possess it. Amen. I'm going somewhere else. And, and a lot of that I just said was true. But an extreme of that will get you in trouble. Paul said, you know, i got hardship in prison waiting on me. So i tell you what I'm going to do. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. I'm a man driven by purpose. That's what he's saying. And so many times we lose pursuit and we lose purpose. It knocks us off track. Yeah, things happen. I got to get back on. So 2021, church, let's live on purpose. Let's live with intent. Let's live with the desire to get to know him more and more. And in so doing, I promise you this will be a better year than last. Amen. But you've got to make it so. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Those watching online, listen to the preacher now. I pray in Jesus' name that you grasp hold of the Word of God. That you start searching through it for purpose. That there would be a reality check on where we're all at. Knowing that God can change the dilemmas that we're in. That God can turn around the very dramas that have been happening around us. God, I want to seek you and seek you first. And in so doing, I believe that purpose will be instilled into our lives. I thank you, God, for healing the body of Christ. I pray for those right now that are struggling with all types of, of different ailments and, and uh, maladies in their life. I, I speak in the name of Jesus for healing. God, I'm, I'm a man that still believes in healing. 
I believe in the supernatural. I believe you're a way maker. You're a promise keeper. God, I thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Before you sit down, I want you to think about this. Imagine you. You, just one. One disciple. Be ye male nor female. One disciple. You have a mission on this earth. Carl, you got a mission on this earth. What has God designed you uniquely to do? Unique means, uh, well, you know, I've often said unique means whether you, it, it doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. You know, it's unique. You, you're just unique. Everybody here is unique, actually. Amen. When you get a vision for what God has for you, things begin to change. Uh, finances change. Friends change. Faith changes. Things change. But you've got to decide first whether Fred or Frida wants to do this thing. I'm going to serve God. Amen. I'm going to seek after him. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. This is your genesis. Your genesis determines your revelation. How you start is how you finish. I feel like we got a good start this morning. Amen. Now, one of the things I did this, uh, yesterday, I wrote the largest check I have written in a whole year. Y'all didn't get that, did you? It's the largest check I've written in a whole year. Amen. I'm going to turn it in today. Hallelujah. Because I'm believing God for my finances this year. Got to. Got to. I'm, I'll be 60 in, in a few weeks. 60. I know, Sam. That don't sound old to you, but to me, that's old. You was, you was a puppy at 60. But I, it's old as I ever been. Hey, I'm walking out to the truck this morning. I'm going, man. I got a friend. That's the same age as me that just had a baby. I love that man. I love that man. His 40-year-old siblings are saying, well, thank you, Daddy. Amen. I'm 59 now. I'll be 60 next month. Mm -mm. I'm giving you all a head start. Amen. If you reach down, get your tie the offering envelope. If you give them by phone, you're welcome to do that. Amen. We, we, we're going to reverse this again. I apologize. I didn't want to just, I don't want to mess you up and say, we'll just take it up in the back. Okay? Amen. No, we, did we pass the buckets last week? We're going to pass the buckets again. Amen. My bad. I forgot. It's been a year. Amen. So we're going to pass the buckets. Our servant leaders come up, man. Give me a hand. If you need a tithe or offer, they should be in the pews there. Thank God for the little country church, Crosby Campus. Can I get an amen? Good to have all the good things that are going on in this house. All the good things that are going to take place this year. Amen. Transitions, all the things. We're just going to believe God for the best. Hallelujah. David, you come up with the closing. Amen. Uh, everybody got an envelope, needs one. Got your phones. Give your best. Give your best. Amen. Last week, uh, I'll be honest with you, just start giving here. Barely covered. Uh, well, it was rough. So I'm believing God this year we're going to start out better. Amen. Not getting on nobody. I'm just asking you to step up, do the right thing financially. Amen. Honor God with your giving. This has nothing to do with whether we... Our, I believe our church is going to survive. A lot of churches shut down this year. Man, they shut down. It broke my heart they shut down. But on the flip side, I said, God, I don't want that to happen. Fireball, how you doing? You gave me, you bought, you gave me that little thing last week that I preached on. That little cornhole thing. You beat me left-handed. Don't come to this church. Your family come here. You find another church. Amen. You beat me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know I love you. Amen. David. Amen. Give it up, V Pastor. <clears throat> All right. Let's see what we got. January 5th through the 6th. Uh... We are going to be having a midweek uh, service this week, so you guys come out, bring your youth, whether it's here, whether it's in New Caney, uh, we will be having uh, youth and service this week um, on Tuesday and Wednesday, January 10th, SWAP will be having their uh, Happy New Year's, see you next Sunday, that's what it says, anything else? Come on, 
Bible study. We all need to study that Bible a little more. Especially in a year like we had, we just need a little more Bible. Amen. Give us some answers that we've been looking for. I know that it's been important in my life. And Pastor was talking about being in church. Listen, the, Psalms 92 says this, that he who is planted in the house of God will surely flourish in the courts of our king. And listen, if you want to have, and, and that doesn't always, you know, we like as Americans to say money. Oh, that means I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make me some money. And that's good. Don't get me wrong. Money, we have to have it. But the reality is, is he's talking about flourishing in life having the favor of God in your life, working towards you, not against you. And that's what we all need, amen? And so I just encourage you guys, get in the house, sow in the house, be a part of the house. And when you are, you will see your life increase in ways that you never saw before, amen? Anything else? Now, I only had two things on the agenda, so I just want to make sure. Well, no one cussing me when we get out of here. <laughs> Y'all laugh because you know something in my Hey, seriously, from the bottom of, of the staff, we love you guys. We're so grateful to be a part of this church and grateful that you guys are part of this church with us, serving with us. Uh, today, we're believing God for jobs and better jobs, more money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and return, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. I love you guys. Lord, I just pray that you would bless everybody in this house, that this year would be a good year, that we look to you, Dad, and we just say it's all about you this year. We love you, we thank you, and bless you on the way out. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Get your kiddos. Yeah, Tuesday night.